if you're in the market for a performance car that you can use every day, you're pretty well catered for it. From BMW, you have the M Class. From Mercedes, you have AMG. And Lexus, you have the F Series. Now, we have a new kit on the block the Infiniti IPL G37 Coupe. If this car was entered in a beauty pageant, it'll definitely win number one. It looks absolutely great. So what's different with this IPL from any other G37 coupe is in the front it's actually 10% stiffer in the suspension and in the back it's even 20% stiffer in the suspension. It's also lowered by a couple inches. And what does that mean for the performance? The IPL is not just a badging job. It's actually a better car than the G37 and the G37S. It's a little bit lower to the ground than the G37, and it's also a little bit more stiffer. It's 10% stiffer in the front and 20% stiffer in the back where you get all your power from. Also, the engine's up from 330 horsepower in the regular G37 to 348 horsepower and a little bit more torque. That's almost a Nismo from 370Z. That's basically the same, uh, same engine. It's a little bit more tuned for a sportier treatment, so the thing revs really nice but at low revs it kind of drones out and, and it's not as quiet or fine as a Jeep 37 so it's a little bit more of a sporting car that's why it's called the Infinity Performance Line because it, it really does love to go fast it really loves corners and straight lines I mean you can really beat anything off the line uh, it's not going to be as fast as an M3 where you have a big V8 or you, know, or you could get like an AMG which has a big V8 to 6.2 liter in the AMG uh, cars so it's not going to be as quick as those but it's not priced as those I mean, a starting M3 is around 65 grand, but this is starting at just over 51 grand. So it's a little bit cheaper than any of those cars, but still gives you that great performance and that great sound. I mean, we'll just rev it up for you guys. It really, really sounds good. It has the paddle shift. It's full magnesium paddle shift, which really feels good when you're shifting. Uh, and it also, it really feels like a manual. It makes you feel involved. Uh, but the only problem we have got is with the automatic transmission, if you leave it in drive, it kind of hunts for gears. I'm not sure why, but it kind of goes from like one, you know, if you're, if you're cruising around, it kind of goes from fourth gear all the way up to sixth gear or your seventh gear if you're going a little bit quicker. So it hunts for gears a little bit, but other than that, you know, if you put it in drive sport when you're driving around into, a, you know, canyon roads, if you don't want to shift them yourself, drive sport does an excellent, excellent job of driving itself. Uh, but I'm saying, you know, if you're driving this car, if you don't get the, uh, the manual, definitely use the paddle shifter because it really does feel good. Just because this thing does not have 500 rampaging stallions under the bonnet doesn't mean that it's slow. The V6 will power this thing to 60 in 5.5 seconds, which is very quick in its class. And just listen to that engine note. In my book, I marked the G-Series as one of the best sport cars we got out of Japan. That iconic front grille, that amazing engine noise, the precise handling makes the German manufacturers scratch their heads. And when I said it's precise handling, when you turn the traction control off, this thing is great through the corners. Inside, it's beautifully crafted. It has that lipstick red leather on the seats. It also has that red stitching on the steering wheel itself, kind of giving that sporting potential of this car. Like, this car can really, really put a smile on your face. I mean, through the corners, it's really nice. It's really well planted. Uh, Infinity that has a, a long history of doing some underneath trickery work, basically having zero lift under the car. So you are really planted. You have a lot of downforce holding that car in the back. There's a spoiler that actually looks good. Not bad, but a spoiler that looks good on the back that are helping pushing me down and delivering my power. So this is a rear-wheel drive only uh, car. They don't make an all-wheel drive. It's only a rear-wheel drive car, and you know, having 350 horsepower coming out of the back, it's a little hard to put all that power, but this car really finds a way uh, to put it down. Now, traction control, it is a little annoying. Uh, it does keep you all planted, but when you turn it off, you have a lot of fun doing fantastic tail slides and, you know, everything. It's really well handled car. It's a very, very well uh, composed car as well. So when you do get out of shape, just a little bit of power and a little bit of counter steering and you're back to where you're going. It's not like a car that, you know, if you mistreat it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spit you out like it's breakfast. No, this car actually will listen to you and its inputs are a little bit slow because it is a little bit more of a luxury car. Uh, I mean, it's still an Infiniti, so it still needs to have that luxurious car feel that Infiniti is very well known for. Uh, but it definitely does not give you, uh, uh, it does give you some slip. So when you turn off that traction control, it's not that bad. 
I think the IPL G Coupe is probably the best alternative to any other car in that class, like the M3 or V1M from BMW. I think it looks even better than that car, and I think it sounds better than that car. It's not as powerful, and it's not as big as Gas Guzzler, and again, that beautiful look, that beautiful body is probably the best in my book.